Vengeance. Vengeance. Welcome to another video, boys and girl. Today's video is gonna be pretty weird, but also pretty interesting, since we're gonna talk about how Hearthstone is rigged, and I will even show you something that can be considered as proof. I already made a Hearthstone conspiracy video a few months ago, and it was more like a joke, but the comments I got under it felt pretty interesting, and one user even shared me Blizzard's patent law, which goes over a pretty interesting invention of theirs, and we will go over that now. There are plenty of dirty little secrets and tricks in there, and it kinda even made me feel a little bit sick the first time I read it, so hold on tight while we go through all of it. Now let's jump right into it. The main topics I discussed in my Hearthstone Conspiracy video the last time were that the matchmaking is rigged and it changes depending on the deck you play. I also pointed jokingly that Hearthstone is listening to you, but we will find out that's actually not a freaking joke. I talked about that when you mulligan cards, you sometimes get the exact same mulligan cards, or pretty close those. And I did use the terms that the game decides which player gets to have fun, which we will find out is pretty relevant actually. We also went through that we can top deck the perfect card exactly when we need it on the exact mana we needed to top deck it in. But without further ado, now let's see what's in the patent. <laughs> so here it is, Activision Publishing Inc. And the abstract, a system and method is provided that devises microtransactions in multiple video games. The system may include microtransactions, arrange matches to influence game-related purchases. For instance, the system may match a more expert marquee player with a junior player to encourage the junior player to make game-related purchases of items possessed used by the marquee player. A junior player may wish to emulate the marquee player by obtaining weapons and other items used by the marquee player. Pretty scummy. Okay, so this is only the beginning. Now let's scroll through the rest of it. And the first big point is system and method for driving microtransactions in multiplayer video games. Here's the field of the invention. The invention relates to a system and method for driving microtransactions in multiplayer video games. Huh. Before anyone assumes that this is not for Hearthstone, because a lot of the times the terms are used more like a COD game or something along those lines for Call of Duty and stuff like that, here is the part that contradicts this. While aspects of the invention may be described herein with reference to various game levels or modes, characters, roles, games, items, etc. associated with a first-person shooter FPS game, it should be appreciated that any such examples are for illustrative purposes only and are not intended to be limiting. The matchmaking system and method described in detail herein may be used in any genre of multiplayer video games without limitations. Hearthstone. Now let's see the first paragraph that shows us that the matchmaking is anything but random. The analytics and feedback engine may analyze games and player combinations to infer what makes a good match for specific players and specific games, and or which kinds of players' playstyles might be favored by a particular match. In this matter, the analytics and feedback engine may use various data and metrics to assess whether a gameplay session was a good one and or whether a future gameplay session will similarly be good for a given player. Now since Hearthstone is a 1v1 player game, you can't really guarantee that both players will have an amazing experience at the same time most of the time. So what this here means is that the game picks which player is going to have the said good experience and the game is gonna try to give that good experience to that player. Which means that the other player is not gonna have fun. Remember what I said in my last Hearthstone Conspiracy video? Blizzard decides which player is gonna get to have fun. And this basically kinda proves that point. Or at least starts to. Hold tight, we will continue on it. Moving on, the pipeline engine may for instance anticipate an interest by players in a subsequent gameplay session, for example based on a game profile and or a player profile, and make a soft reservation for two or more players. For example, a soft reservation may be generated before the players have expressed an interest in the subsequent gameplay session. For example, and without limitation, the pipelining engine may analyze a game progression of a player, for example, which may be stored in a player profile, and predict a game mode, for example, capture the flag that will likely interest the player. Also, the pipeline engine may then make a soft reservation for the player for a game session that includes the game mode. Since we did say that they are using terms, 
Just as examples, in Hearthstone you could say that instead of a capture the flag, let's say that a control warrior would like to have a good game experience, meaning that he will be more than happy to face a soul demon hunter for instance. So for example, if Hearthstone wishes to make that warrior happy, they will just give him that good matchup and he will really enjoy himself and feel good about the decisions he made. Get your puke buckets ready for the next one, cause this one is really disgusting. For example, in one implementation, the system may include a microtransaction engine that arranges matches to influence game-related purchases. For instance, the microtransaction engine may match a more expert marquee player with a junior player to encourage the junior player to make game-related purchases of items possessed used by the marquee player. <laughs> Sorry. A junior player may wish to emulate the marquee player by obtaining weapons or other items by the marquee player, meaning legendary cards for instance, or a whole new archetype. Right now I'm feeling a similar experience in Wild where I play a budget resurrect priest and I keep getting faced against Highlander priests, which are a lot more expensive than the deck I'm using. It's not like I don't have the deck to craft it, I just don't like it, but still the game keeps pushing a bad matchup for me which is a lot more expensive than the deck I'm using. Maybe to make me feel like playing the more expensive deck, hence spend my resources on it. I don't know, you tell me. In one implementation, the microtransaction engine may target particular players to make game related purchases based on their interest. For example, the microtransaction engine may identify a junior player to match with a marquee player based on a player profile of the junior player. In a particular example, the junior player may wish to become an expert sniper in a game or an expert Highlander priest as determined from the player profile. The microtransaction engine may match the junior player with a player that is highly skilled sniper in the game. In this manner, the junior player may be encouraged to make a game related purchase such as a rifle or another item used by the marquee player. Legendary cards. In one implementation, when a player makes a game related purchase, the microtransaction engine may encourage further purchases by matching the player in a gameplay session that will utilize the game related purchase. Doing so may enhance the level of enjoyment by the player for the game related purchase which may encourage further purchases. For example, if the player purchased a particular weapon, the microtransaction engine may match the player in a gameplay session in which the particular weapon is highly effective, giving the player the impression that the particular weapon was a good purchase. This may encourage the player to make future purchases to achieve similar gameplay results. I know. So. In my last video for Conspiracies, I did say that a lot of the times it feels like the opponent top decks cards like Reno, a Prime, and now even Polkit exactly when they need them. A turn 6 Reno to clear a perfect board, a turn 4 Polkit so you start setting up your endgame lethal combo, or even a turn 8, now turn 9, Solarium Prime. How many times has that happened to you where the opponent exactly top decks that card exactly when they need it? A lot. I know, I've tracked. It's a lot. So in this case, basically the game is trying to tell the player that he did a good purchase by crafting those cards. And this is also kinda relevant to another term I've been using lately, the Hearthstone Honeymoon Period. When you craft a new deck, the game starts giving you favorable RNG and you achieve crazy results like 10-0 with a deck you've literally never touched before. But after that honeymoon period ends, everything starts balancing out. How many times have you started playing a new deck and you went into crazy win streaks like 10-0, 25 or something like that? And after that, on the next day, it's like as if you never played that deck and you don't know what you're doing with it, achieving results of a 20 wins and 20 losses in overall. This has happened way too many times for me and I really don't think it's a coincidence. Now let's move down for a part with some figures. And more importantly, figure 8, which depicts a process of influencing in-game purchases through targeted matchmaking according to an implementation of the invention. There are plenty of other diagrams here, but I'm not gonna pretend that I have any idea what they mean. Maybe somebody more experienced in this field might give this a more critical read as well. But it doesn't take much to understand this particular block diagram. It's shown pretty simple. Identify item that may be relevant to first player. In Hearthstone maybe a legendary, or a whole deck for that matter. Identify a second player that possesses the item. Tune match variables and or coefficient and or coefficient how do you read this word? The match first and second players. Match first and second players. 
First player purchases the item? No, do it again. First player purchases the item? Place first player in a gameplay session for which the item is effective. Very, very scummy. Again, explaining how when you purchase a new legendary, you seem to have perfect draw for it for a few games after that, so you get to feel good about yourself. Moving down to the next. System 100 may be used to score potential matches and determine which match will likely lead to a positive gameplay outcome for the matched players. For example, System 100 may generate matches that are predicted to result in greater performance by the matched players, resulting in greater satisfaction and enjoyment by the matched players, and or otherwise will lead to positive gameplay outcomes for the matched players. Again, this correlates to the term I'm using when Blizzard decides which player will get to have fun. Sometimes both players get to have fun, even though in Hearthstone, one always has a little bit more fun than the other, cause one has to win and the other has to lose. And ain't nobody got time for ties anyway. So since Hearthstone is a 1v1 player game, one player gets to have fun and the other one is left in the dumpster. There are plenty of epic games where even when you lose you kinda feel good about it because it was really interesting and really clutch, and it really felt like it came down to skill, but with Hearthstone it always has something to do behind the scenes. And when games like that happen, usually it means that the game was rigging it to be happening as epic as it did, with one player filling the board, the other player top decking the perfect answer, and after that the other player top decking another good board refill, and so on and so forth. And you feel good about games like that, but in reality it's not as amazing as you might first think. There was another pretty interesting comment related to this section under my last video, where Mikrob said that Hearthstone isn't even a random card game, but a whole game is a simulation to play preferably spectacular duels. Which really makes sense when you read this part. And the last part of the document I'm gonna read in this video is maybe the most disturbing one, which correlates to the thing I said before, Hearthstone is listening to you. Plot twist, it's even watching you. Examples of quality factors include, without limitation, a player quitting a match or gameplay session while other players are still playing, aka rage quit. A duration of a gameplay session, longer duration may indicate greater satisfaction, a gameplay performance factor, for example a kill to death ratio in a shooter game, a lap time in a racing game, etc. or a high score in win rates and stuff like that. A player engagement factor, for example a speed of player input, a level of focus, as determined from cameras peripherals, etc. where greater engagement may indicate greater satisfaction. A competition level of a game, for example whether a lopsided or not, where evenly matched games may indicate greater satisfaction. A biometric factor, for example facial expression, pulse body, language, sweat, etc. Explicit feedback from a player, e.g. responses to a survey and other observable metrics related to gameplay. So yeah, maybe it's not such a bad idea to put a sticker over your webcam, huh? So these are the things that I found very disturbing in the document, but you can probably find plenty more things that might be interesting to you if you have a more deeper understanding of the matter. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that you will always be unlucky, but sometimes the game just decides that one player is gonna have fun and the other is not. It's not permanent and the role switches up and sometimes you're the one getting the huge win streaks and after that you're the one getting the huge loss streaks, so it kinda balances itself out. But yeah, you're never going to be always unlucky or always super lucky. Anyway, I would really love to hear what are your thoughts on this matter, so leave your comments below and we can discuss it. Lately I've really been enjoying the videos Zeddy has been putting out about the battle pass and also how Blizzard is treating some people, and I also really enjoy the videos Solemn has been putting out lately as well, for how Hearthstone is manipulating us and again about the battle pass, so I would really find it interesting what they think about this document. It's not a challenge or anything, but I'm just throwing it out as a cool video idea that I will find interesting to watch from them as well. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video guys, I hope you found it interesting and I would really enjoy reading your thoughts on this matter under the video too. Thanks for watching, I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video or stream.